The limit we would like to compute here is uh, the left-hand end behavior of a rational function. And there are a couple of different approaches to being able to compute this. Uh, so I'm going to start with the approach that I tend to like. Um, knowing that this is end behavior, it's really just talking about those end arrows. And so a rational function um, has a polynomial on the top and a polynomial on the bottom. And so for a polynomial, we know about the arrows based on the highest power term. And so that's going to be true for rational functions as well. It's just rather than looking at the highest power term, we're talking about the ratio of the highest power terms. And this is only because we are looking at the limit as we go to either plus or minus infinity. This is an end behavior thing only. So here's how I would like to do this problem. I would like to look at the ratio of the highest power terms knowing that it's the highest power terms that dictate those end arrows. So here on the top, we have it already multiplied out nicely and so identifying the highest power term is just simply looking for the um, term that has um, the highest power there, which is x squared, and we've got to keep a hold of that uh, coefficient that is sitting with it. So we've got to take the negative 2 that goes with that x squared. So that entire highest power term is what we're looking at in the top. Now the bottom is not multiplied out, but that doesn't mean we have to multiply it out first before we move forward. We can be smart about this. If we were to multiply out the bottom, foiling it out, the only way we would get the highest power term would be is if we multiply the highest power term in the first um, set of parentheses, so that highest power term is negative x, and if we multiply it by the highest power term in the second set of parentheses, and that would be the uh, 4x term. So we don't actually have to do the complete multiplication to be able to identify the highest power term on the bottom. Uh, we can just take the product of the highest power terms, paying attention to the fact that we've got to hold on to any signs and coefficients there. So we've got the limit as x goes to negative infinity. On the top, we've got negative 2x squared. And then on the bottom, we've got negative x times 4x. So that would be a negative 4x squared. So that is our um, ratio of highest power terms since we are looking at going off to negative infinity. And we're going to reduce that out before we assess what the limit is. We have a, an x squared on the top and the bottom, so they both go away. And we've got a negative 2 over negative 4. So the negatives actually, negative over negative would be positive. 2 over 4 would reduce out to a half. And so overall, we have reduced this problem by looking at the ratio of highest power terms to a limit of a constant. And a limit of a constant is just that constant value, and so we get our answer of 1 half. And so this is um, this is one approach, but the thing that you that I cannot stress enough is this approach of looking at the highest power terms on the top and the bottom is simply only because we are looking at um, going off to positive or negative infinity for x. Now I want to present an alternative solution just to show you kind of another algebraic way in case this first way seems um, a little bit too mysterious for you. So let's look at this alternative solution. This is just the same limit copied over. Um, notice that it, the bottom is not multiplied out, but the first thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and multiply that bottom out completely. So um, we're looking at the limit as x goes to negative infinity. The top is 1 minus 2x squared. And the bottom, um, we've got the 3 times the 3 is 9. And then our outer and inner terms are both going to be um, with the power x. So we've got a 3 times a 4, which would be 12x. And then we've got a negative times a 3 there. So that would be minus 3 more x's. So we've got 12 minus 3. So that would be 9 total x's for the outer and inner terms. And then the, um, the last terms would be a negative x times a positive 4x, so that would be negative 4x squared. So that's simply multiplying it out. Because the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look everywhere in the problem there. Um, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look everywhere there in the bottom, and I'm going to see that my highest power term there in the bottom is an x squared term. And so the fact that I have x squared as my highest power in the bottom tells me go ahead and divide both the top and the bottom by that highest power 
um, of x. So we're going to divide everything by x squared. So what, so what we're really doing is multiplying by a fancy form of 1, which would be like a 1 over x squared divided by 1 over x squared. That's what we're, um, that's what we're really doing here when we are taking every term that we see and dividing every term by x squared. Now, why x squared? Well, the reason is we find the highest power of x and the uh, denominator, so in the bottom. So divide um, all terms by the highest power uh, of x. In the bottom. Okay, and so that would be x squared here for this particular example. All right, so let's see what happens when we do that. Okay, the reason that we're doing that is because we want to have something in the bottom left over that's a number. Uh, and so what happens is we've got a 9 over x squared plus a 9x over x squared minus a 4x squared over x squared. That's what's looking like in the bottom. On the top, we've got a 1 over x squared minus 2, look, let me put that up a little higher, 2x squared over x squared. So right now I have done this division of all terms by the highest power of x that's in the bottom. And um, I'm going to reduce that out before I do any sort of limit computing here. Limit as x goes to negative infinity of uh, the top is the 1 over x squared for the first term. Notice the second term has the x squared over x squared, which leaves us with just the coefficient there of minus 2. Uh, in the bottom, we've got a 9 over x squared. The second term has an x on top and an x squared on bottom, so it would end up being like a, a 9 over just the single x in the bottom. And then the last term has the x squared in the top and the bottom that would reduce out, leaving you with 4. So now take a look at what we have at this point. We are shooting x out to negative infinity. So whether we have um, negative infinity squared in the bottom or negative infinity in the bottom, we are dividing by something very large, either large in the negative direction or large in the positive direction. So dividing by like a plus or minus infinity makes the fraction itself zero. So what's happening here is all of these terms that have x in the bottom are going now to zero. So on the top, we'd have uh, the fact the term 1 over x squared going to 0, and then we have minus the constant 2. In the bottom, the 9 over x squared goes to 0, plus the 9 over x goes to 0 as well, because dividing by negative infinity shoots that fraction back down to 0. And then we've got the constant there in the bottom, the minus 4 to finish this off. So now the goal here was to have all of the terms that are in the bottom of this fraction go to zero except for one. So notice that negative four did not go off to zero, and that's simply because of our choice of dividing everything by that highest power on the bottom. That highest power term on the bottom was our negative four x squared. So what we wanted to do was ensure that that highest power term was going to go to a constant that would be not zero. And so that's how I made the choice of dividing everything by x squared because that's the highest power that happened to be on the bottom. Now, even if it's not the highest power that's on the top, that's not going to be problematic um, because now we're then just figuring out what's happening on the top, knowing that the bottom is just some constant that's not zero. So for this particular one, we see that the top is negative 2, the bottom is negative 4, and so negative 2 over negative 4 reduces out to the positive 1 half that we got um, in the alternative way too. So perhaps this um, whole algebraic setup gives you a little more insight as to how to compute the limits, but notice it's a fair amount more writing than just our initial assessment where we knew that the um, highest power terms were dominating. And so this gives you two different, um, both correct approaches um, with work justifying uh, your answer here. And so you can take either one of these approaches and decide which one makes the most sense to you so that you can use that for your solutions.